Welcome. You are watching HLN Now. Michael Long here. Every day at the top of the hour, we bring you the most shared stories. And what are we sharing today? Our concerns over Ebola. It's an international scare. You got aid workers scrambling to contain the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history. And now we know a second American infected with the virus is back in the United States. We're talking about missionary Nancy Wrightbull, landed at Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Georgia a few hours ago. Then she was rushed to Atlanta's Emory University Hospital, taken in on a gurney. Now, Emory's just one of four hospitals in the country with extensive isolation procedures, and it's just a few blocks away from the CDC. Emory, also where Dr. Kent Brantley has been since Saturday. Now, doctors say he's making progress since getting the experimental medication ZMAP. Really sounded like he had immediate results to all that. Both patients received doses of the drug before leaving West Africa. So far, we know more than 700 people have died in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. The disease continues to spread and spread fear. There are concerns uh, el elsewhere. A man with Ebola-like symptoms is in isolation at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. He recently traveled to West Africa, but doctors say the odds are this is not Ebola. Test results on him should come back today or tomorrow. And another man in Saudi Arabia is also being monitored. He recently returned from Sierra Leone. He's in critical condition with a viral hemorrhagic fever. That means hemorrhaging, bleeding. And that's one of the signs of Ebola when it's at its worst. We know you have a lot of questions about this deadly virus, and we're going to get to your questions. You can call us, 1-877-TELL-HLN is the number. Uh, our colleague, Yasmin Vasugian, she's been pouring over your questions as well, so she'll be bringing you some of your questions from Twitter and Facebook. And here to answer those questions, Back with us, infectious disease expert, Dr. William Schaffner. Doctor, before we get to everybody, all the questions, a base question from a lot of people in this country is, how worried should people be here in the United States that they're going to contract Ebola? We don't have to worry about that at all. Let me pour oil on those troubled waters. <laughs> we don't have to be concerned. Ebola is not going to spread in the United States. So I don't think we have to worry about that. We're concerned about our health care workers over there taking care of people like Dr. Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull. Got it. All right. Hey, Yasmin, I know you've been pouring over some of the questions. What do you have for us? Yeah, Dr. Schaffner, we have a lot of questions coming in from Facebook and Twitter, which I'm sure you can imagine. So up first we have, can you get Ebola from just touching a person or a non-human surface? It, it is remotely possible if you're touching a very sick person because the virus can be on the skin. And indeed, that occasionally happens in Africa. Will not happen here at all, of course, because the healthcare workers who are treating Dr. Brantley and Ms. Wrightbull are wearing protective equipment. But doc just to be clear, doctor, uh, the most direct way of getting it is contact with blood or secretions of an infected person. Is that correct? That is exactly correct. It's hard to get. You have to have very close, intimate contact with those secretions. Okay, up next, if you've traveled to West Africa and you think you may have Ebola, what should that person do? Well, you would have had to be exposed in some way, but mm -hmm. the average traveler who comes back from West Africa is not going to have Ebola. But if you were concerned, obviously present yourself for care. Tell the health care provider, your doctor, why it is that you're concerned, and then you would be monitored. You might be asked to confine yourself to your home, and of course, uh, you would be taking your temperature a couple of times a day. So at the earliest signs of fever, you would be admitted to the hospital and get good care. All right, Doctor, we've got some calls coming in as well. one tell hln is the number. Donnie's with us in Georgia. Hey, Donnie, what's your question? Uh, hey, Mike. Hey. Um, my question is, uh, this guy's a doctor. He knows how this virus spreads. I'm sure he took precautions. How did he get it? And what makes him think that we can control this in Atlanta? Hmm. Doctor, what so, do we know about that? Donnie's asked a very popular question that I'm asked all the time. Well, in Africa, providing care in a 100-degree temperature with total body precautions is much, much more arduous, and you're taking your gear off several times a day because you get so dehydrated. And so even if you try to do it absolutely perfectly on occasion, there may be a slip-up. We don't know how these two people acquired their infection. This is not going to happen in the United States, where we're air-conditioned, we have more time, we're much more deliberate, and we monitor ourselves much more carefully. Hey, Doctor, again, go over for us the precautions that are being taken at Emory for those that are in contact with the two patients. 
Well, first of all, the patient is in an isolation room. The healthcare workers who come in will don uh, masks, gowns, gloves. So every contact with the patient has a protective gear between us and them. All of the patient's uh, excretions are going to be collected and will be incinerated. So it's a very elaborate, thorough, careful, rigorous procedure. The healthcare workers' risk is minimal. The risk to their families is none. Uh, doctor, you know, a lot of people are wondering about the cure and the treatment for the disease. So ultimately, we know the mortality rate is about 90%, meaning one in 10 people die, uh, or serve, sorry, excuse me, one in 10 people survive Ebola. So how are they treating them? And talk to me a little bit about ZMAP, this new experimental drug. So act, actually, at the moment, in this particular outbreak, the fatality rate is not 90%, but 50 to 60%, okay. which is already plenty high. But nonetheless, our most of our care is supportive care. We take care of the body in every way that we can, intravenous fluid, watching the urine output, checking the liver function, et cetera, et cetera, so that the body can recover as best as possible. Now, this ZMAP treatment are artificially, molecularly created antibodies. These are proteins that fight the virus, bind up the virus so the virus can't infect more cells, thus trying to stop the infection in its track and let the body recover then. Doctor, so I, I, very experimental, very experimental. Doctor, I have one more question for you. And, and you know, just to sort of put it into layman's terms, because I, th I think a lot of people have difficulty understanding this, as I do, but is it ultimately kind of like creating a vaccine, per se, for Ebola, the way that we would get vaccines for mumps or for chicken pox or anything that we've already, you know, that we all get every year, or, the, or you know, the flu, the flu, uh, flu shot? Sure. The vaccine is designed to prevent the infection. ZMAT is designed to treat it. There are also people working on vaccines, which would indeed be an inoculation to prevent the infection. Those are also still experimental, but those experiments have been accelerated because of the concern about this outbreak. So we'll see those studies going forward and cross our fingers, hope that they're successful down the road and soon. All right, doctor, thanks again. Thanks for your expertise, Yasmin, for going over some of our viewers' uh, great questions. And thanks for the phone call. 1-877-TELL-HLN is the number.